we chart a course back into the light? Will we find the strength to banish the mages from our kingdoms? Unite around the warmth of the eternal fire. Nigh is the time of the sword and axe. None will fight this war in our stead. Nigh is the time of madness and disdain. Welcome back to another Witch and Lore video. So, I was sorting out my schedule the other day, and I realised that I wanted to introduce a new series into the mix. And it's been a very, very requested set of videos that I've been asked for. People have said, hey, you should cover the religions, you should do blah 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 blah, and I've never been able to find a way to fit it into the current schedule. So I decided to add a new series, and this series is going to be called Witcher Religions. So to start these series with, uh, I suppose you could say a bang, <laughs> I've decided to start with probably the most famous religion out of the Witcher universe, at least just from a game point of view, and this is of course, the Church of the Eternal Fire. So as always, I'm going to begin today's video with some basic information on this religion. So to begin with, this religion's Grand Temple is located in the city of Novigrad, on an isle known as the Temple Isle. I'll get into all that later in the video, as it is actually explained briefly. So the believers of this religion believe magic to be evil and fight against all beings considered abnormal. For example, witches, beasts, and non-humans. On some occasions, even witches aren't welcomed into cities governed by this religion, and any city that allows them in keeps a watchful eye over them. You see this slightly in that scene with Caleb Menger at the start of The Witcher 3, well, at least the start of when you enter Novigrad, and he says, I'll be keeping an eye on you. It's because he is technically an abnormal creature, but he's a bit different because he actually hunts abnormal creatures, which you could say are even more abnormal than them. <laughs> so the church is currently led by Hierarch Kemelfar, as someone said in my last video, what a weird pronunciation. Go and play the games and watch the clip. That is how you say his name. It's actually said like that. So, the church is only present briefly in the books. For example, in the story entitled The Eternal Flame, and this is in the Witcher book, The Sword of Destiny, they are present. And I won't ruin that story for any of you planning to read about them, and also it's not exactly relevant to this video. And maybe I may even do a short Witcher Tales video on that in the future. So, at least throughout the games, the church has three military associations. Two of which I have actually already covered, and this is of course the Order of the Flame Flaming Rose and the Witch Hunters, but also there is the Temple Guard. So next I'm going to discuss this religion's origins, and its history, or at least everything you should probably know when you're starting the Witcher games, at least if you want to know more about it. So according to legend, the first of the human colonists visited an abandoned town, but as they arrived they saw a strange glow emanating from one of the palaces. After they went inside to inspect the glow, they came across an individual sitting by a great bowl of fire. When they questioned him and asked why he was staying there, he simply stated, I guard the eternal fire. As long as it will flame in this place, so long this city and your kin will endure. Then he just disappeared. At first, of course, the humans were shocked, but later agreed that it was clearly a divine sign. So, designated some men to guard the fire and make sure it doesn't go out. Sometime later, some of Creve's missionaries arrived at the town and determined that it had been blessed by the presence of their god, and decided to help and organise the new church in the model of their cult. So at that time, Novigrad was the area's only brick town, and eventually lots of people came to settle the area. Some crafted, some traded, and sometimes even the non-humans followed the eternal fire. So as I said before, the priests were strongly against the use of magic, and the reason for this was that they thought it would sully the eternal flames. Sorcery is considered blasphemy in the religion, excluding the people who have obtained permission or trade magical items. So as with a lot of things, there is clear some holes here. The priests actually considered this fire all-powerful, and anyone who states that a monster could enter the city's streets without being harmed is considered to be a blasphemer, as it is questioning the Eternal Fire's power. So to end today's video, I'm going to discuss what happened with them during the games. I'm not going to go over their full story in the games, as you all have most likely played it, and it's not necessary to just get the idea of what this religion is, but what I will do is give you a basic overview of the Witcher 1, the Witcher 2, and the Witcher 3 with the Church of the Eternal Fire. So the Church of the Eternal Fire is actually present throughout all the Witcher games, but most highlighted in The Witcher 1 and 3. In The Witcher 1, you are introduced to the Reverend, and you are also shown the influence the Eternal Fire has on the outskirts of Vizima and just the ordinary folk of that area. And of course, you are later introduced to the Order of the Flaming Rose, another group which follows the Eternal Fire, and you see how much influence they have in Vizima as a whole, which gives you an idea of this church's influence. It's probably one of the biggest churches in the north at this point. And now I'm going to read the journal entry about the Eternal Fire from The Witcher 1. Cult of the Eternal Fire. Worshippers of the Eternal Fire believe in the undying flame as a symbol of survival and a guide through darkness. 
They view it as a harbinger of progress and better days to come. Clerics of the Eternal Fire oversee the Faith as well as their temples, where flames burn continuously. The Order of the Flaming Rose is the cult's militant arm. So in The Witcher 2, they are mentioned but only very, very briefly, and you only get this slight reference when you discover that the Order of the Flaming Rose are at Loch Muin. You meet them and obviously they worship the Eternal Fire, so clearly the Eternal Fire is present in this game in some form. And finally in The Witcher 3, as you'll know, they are present throughout the game. I've pretty much covered how they're present in my Witch Hunter video. You see that they hold almost daily burnings of sorceresses and witches and whatever else, and herbalists even. You see that they clearly have a lot of power, you see Ciri go to Temple Isle, you see a lot of references to Hierarch Kemelfar and the rest of them. For example, I did my Borsodi video recently, and whilst recording that, Horse Borsodi even said, if Hierarch Kemelfar comes in here, don't even let him in. Which just shows you the influence this church has. They're very, very famous. And their ruler is almost like the Pope of the Witcher world. And in fact, with The Witcher 3, they are present literally since the start of the game. And what I mean by this is if you load up The Witcher 3, you get a cutscene at the start, and that shows you the eternal fire. Well, there's a priest from the Eternal Fire talking to everybody about the conjunction of spheres and witches and it's a good intro but it's also about the Church of the Eternal Fire and their beliefs. And in the game they seem to have almost complete control over the free city of Novigrad, therefore making it not completely free. For example if you cast magic in the streets the guards can actually turn on you and kill you because obviously that goes against the church's beliefs. And actually one more thing I want to say before I end today's video, I seem to remember and I imagine a lot of you remember this but it's where you hear a priest from the Church of the Eternal Fire talking about the Eternal fire, you as Geralt can have a word with him, get him to shut up, get him to run away, and then he actually sends people to kill you later on. And this shows us that the church does not condone anyone disbelieving in them, or questioning them in any way. But anyway, that's the end of today's video. Sorry it's been a little bit of a short one. As I said, the reason these videos can kind of be short, and obviously the Eternal Fire is a big subject, is just because I cover all aspects of it over the course of a few videos. For example, you could technically count this, my Order of the Flaming Rose video, my Witch Hunter video, as all one big video, which is almost half an hour probably in length. So, you know, subjects get covered as a whole. This is just a basic on the pure religion, none of its branches. I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. As always, these videos take me a lot of time to do, so if any of you watching just feel like being kind, could you please click the like button? That's very, very kind of you, so thank you so much for that. Also, be sure to leave a comment leaving suggestions for future videos, and also, just telling me what you thought about the video. Thank you, guys. Also, be sure to follow my Twitch. I'm going to try and stream more games on there soon. I've just been very, very tired recently and haven't had a lot of time, but I will try and make time this Saturday. Saturday when I normally would have streamed I had a very very long day so I didn't have time but I will try and do it next Saturday at least. And also as I've said in my last video I actually do polls on Twitter for my random fandom lore video I do every two weeks so if you go and follow me on there and you should hopefully get that I do it every Friday every two weeks so it won't be this Friday it'll be next Friday that I'll do a random fandom lore video poll. So the options that might come up next time could be Elder Scrolls, Batman, Game of Thrones, loads of things. I won't be Middle Earth because I already covered that but if you want to make sure you get your vote in and you get the video that you want, be sure to follow me on there and check that out. Also, be sure to join the Discord. All the links for everything, by the way, are in the description, so you don't need to go to my channel page or anything. They're just all in the description for you guys. If you join the Discord, there's loads of Witcher guys on there. We talk basically all hours of the day, no matter what your time zone, there's always somebody on in one way or another. I talk in there every so often when I have time. We always have fun. We post art, we post screenshots we find of the Witcher world. It's really fun, so be sure to join that in the description. And as always, a big thank you to the Patreon pledges, or as I like to call you guys, the Grand Masters. You guys are honestly amazing. Thank you so, so much for donating. It's honestly helped me out more than you could understand. I don't want to get into it, but it's very, very kind that you guys donate the money. It's allowed me to do more things, and it's really, really helpful. I got a new Patreon pledge recently, and honestly, every time I get an email, it's just, it makes you think somebody's watched the video, they thought, oh, I've got a bit of money, you know, I don't really needed this extra dollar a month, is nothing, so why not? And I just want to say thank you so, so much. And obviously, thank all the Patreon pledges so much. I mean, some of you donate crazy amounts, which honestly, is surprising to me, and I just, I'm just, you know, I'm humbled. So thank you all so, so much. You're all amazing. I hope you've all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see everybody later. Have an awesome week, guys. This is the first video of the week.